And Dr. Peter Wells, director of Neftex Petroleum. In the oil field, what do you see happening with the price of oil in 15 years or 20 years? Hmm. I think before we've reached the end of the decade, I mean, somewhere around 2017, 2018, uh, crude oil production, not oil production, but crude oil production is probably going to peak. Uh, it may be having a plateau for quite a while, but it means that the incremental supply will no longer be there to meet the incremental demand, which will be a shock to the system. So once crude oil peaks, and the market trades crude oil, it doesn't trade NGLs or tar sands, it trades crude oil. That will send a signal to the market that uh, peaks about to happen or plateau is coming up and price is going to go up at that point, uh, probably inexorably for a while. Sometime after that, the price has a big signal on markets. Uh, unsubsidized markets will react in different ways depending on the tax base. I would expect Europe to be quite flexible in responding to higher prices because so much is embedded in tax. So demand management downwards will happen in Europe before it happens in the US, for example. But eventually it will happen in the US too, along with demand destruction. People just say, well, I've reached $5 again, and last time that happened, I put the pickup in the, in the driveway and drove something else. So this will become, uh, this will happen again. And this time it won't just be a spike, it will be something inexorable, it will be a steady progression. But as the demand comes off, around 2018, 2019, 2020, as demand comes off again, we'll have a gap opening up between supply and demand, even though supply is falling. Because you know, OECD countries, demand's pretty flat anyway, or even falling in the case of Japan. So I think Europe, Europe OECD countries, you know, they'll be able to respond quite well. The problem will be in places like China and India, which have subsidized fuel in the case of China, uh, rampant growth, you know, eight, nine percent per annum, requiring a lot of energy. They're at a very uh, energy intensive phase of their growth, industrialization, putting power plants in, uh, building roads, you know, people want cars. So they're in a completely different part of the cycle. Uh, so China will have more of a shock uh, to a higher price. I mean, they'll be able to pay for it, but only up to a point. So I think for China, it will be quite a surprise and will hit them hard. I think they are, they're aware of this. This is why they're thinking of energy independence, why they're thinking of things like CTL. Uh, they're looking at developing their own gas resources. So they know this is you know, in, the fore, in, the, in, in the background there. They're just not quite sure when. And I suspect they won't be able to react fast enough. If China has such a, a shock, will they also have a big shock during the automobile sales as well? I would think so, yes. Uh, you know, they... Unlike the U.S., the way that it'll be downsizing of car size or downsizing of you know, cylinder capacity or consumption. In the case of China, it'll just be we won't buy the car. Um, we just won't have one. We'll have a motorcycle. We'll have a bicycle. So you know that that is going to hit the automobile industry. Yes, it does. We only have so much oil that we produce every day. You know the number. Yep. How much is it? Uh, it's about 86 million barrels a day at the moment. And, we're, and the United States is used to getting a fair share of that. About a quarter. Will that change in the next 15 to 20 years? Um, well, the U.S. share is declining as China's, China's growth rises, India's growth rises. The USA's proportion of global consumption is, is declining slowly. Um, and we're not producing more. Well, the U.S. production is falling on a gentle pathway, and it stabilizes, then falls again. But it's generally going to keep falling uh, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, yes. So the local supply, if you like, the indigenous supply, is about five million barrels a day at the moment, plus natural gas liquids. So roughly half to two thirds is imported. And but the globe itself, the world is not producing more, which means that we, uh, the United States, may not get more? Well, if it comes to price rationing, the USA can afford it. Uh, if the globe goes to a price rationing system so that you know, sub-Saharan Africa doesn't get anything because they can't afford it, uh, the US and Europe and most OECD countries will still be able to afford oil, even at two or $300 a barrel. Of course, it's a shock to the system. Um, uh, you know, there'll be a readjustment of where all that petrodollars go, but it, it could cope with it. 
uh, can certainly afford it. And there would be a response lag before people change their consumption patterns. But rich countries can afford it. They just have slightly less standard of living. Uh, it's the poor countries that will suffer the most. Peter, thank you very much. Apocalyptic visions.